So here is a fairly common exam question where you have some sort of a molecule and you need to figure out how many delocalized electrons you have in this molecule. But before we actually answer this question, let's talk about what it means to be delocalized. So whenever we use the term delocalized electrons, that means that the electrons can participate in resonance. So this is where your knowledge of the resonance structures and how to operate with resonance is going to be extremely extremely useful. For instance, let's look at this molecule over here. I've got a pi bond over here and I have an electron pair. So what I can do in this case is I can take these electrons and push them towards my double bond to give me the following resonance contributor over here looking like that. So what happened in this case is that I had a carbon-carbon double bond and there were two pi electrons on that double bond. I also had a nitrogen that also had two p electrons. So that means that in total we had four delocalized electrons in this molecule. Now here is another example, butadiene. In this case, like in the previous case, I can do resonance by taking one of my double bonds and polarizing that towards the other double bond. So for instance, in this case, if I were to take these electrons and push them towards my other double bond like that, I would end up with the following resonance structure over here. And now, like in the previous case, I will see which electrons have participated in resonance here. And those are those electrons of the double bonds. So here, again, I have four total delocalized electrons. Now, on contrary, when it comes to the localized electrons, well, those guys cannot participate in resonance. So let's say we have a molecule like that. Well, in this case, we have the sp3 atom which breaks our conjugation between the double bond and the electron pair which means that the electrons on the nitrogen are localized and the electrons on the pi bond are also localized. They cannot participate in resonance. And while some of you might argue that, well, we could technically draw the resonance structure for a double bond, and yes, you would be correct, but that is not a reasonable resonance structure. A single double bond, the resonance structure for a single double bond is going to be so negligible, so insignificant, that we are not going to consider that any reasonable resonance, so a single double bond, an isolated double bond, we typically count that as localized electrons between the carbons, rather than delocalized over multiple atoms via resonance. Now, here is another example. This one is going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, in this case, to draw my resonance structures, well, the first thing that I can do, I can take an electron pair from the oxygen and push that towards my double bond, that going to produce the following resonance structure over here. Then from this point, I take an electron pair that I now have on the carbon and push that towards the next double bond, and in this case, I'm going to get the next resonance contributor. Well, in this case, I had a double bond between my carbons, that's two electrons, another double bond between the carbons, that's another two electrons, and finally, when it comes to my oxygen, one electron pair on that oxygen was used in resonance. So one electron pair was, in fact, delocalized. The second electron pair on that oxygen, however, was localized, so I am not going to count those electrons as a part of my delocalized system, which means that in this case, my grand total is six delocalized electrons. Typically, when you have heteroatoms with multiple electron pairs, like let's say oxygen with two electron pairs, or maybe sulfur with two electron pairs, or let's say, I don't know, chlorine with three electron pairs, Typically, we are going to be using just one electron pair in resonance, and the other one or two electron pairs that might be sitting on your atom are going to be localized and they're not going to be used in resonance. And just like when it comes to the electron pairs, not every single pi bond is going to be delocalized either. Let's say we have an example over here with a triple bond. Well, in this case, there are quite a few different resonance structures that I could potentially draw. Let's go with the one where I push my electrons 
towards the triple bond like this, giving me the following resonance contributor over here. Well, in this case, if I look carefully at which electrons I have used here for the resonance, I will see that I've only used one pi bond in my triple bond, and the other pi bond that I have on my triple bond was not used, so those electrons are localized. So in this case, I have two electrons from the triple bond, two electrons from the double bond, so the grand total I have four delocalized electrons in this molecule because the other two electrons that I have on my other pi bond of the triple bond, those electrons are localized. Finally, the other tricky part that you can see is when you have a heteroatom like nitrogen or oxygen or something and that heteroatom already has a pi bond. Well, in this case, typically, and there are of course a few exceptions from the general rule, but typically the electrons on the heteroatom in cases like that when you you already have a pi bond on that heteroatom, they are going to be localized. So in this case, our delocalized electrons are only the electrons of the pi bond, so overall I have four delocalized electrons here. So now, with all of this in mind, let's go back to the original molecule that I had at the beginning of this video and look at that structure. Well, the very first thing that I want to do for a structure like that, I want to find all of my implicit electron pairs. Here, I have an electron pair on the nitrogen, I have two electron pairs on the oxygen, I have another electron pair on my bottom nitrogen, and finally I have one more electron pair on the nitrogen on the right side of the molecule. So when it comes to my electron pairs, the electron pairs on the oxygen, this one and this one, those electron pairs cannot be meaningfully used in resonance, so those electron pairs are going to be localized, so I'm not going to be counting those. Now, the electron pair on the nitrogen, this electron pair over here, can be used in resonance. I can move those electrons towards my oxygen, or alternatively, I could move that towards my double bond. There are quite a few different ways how I can use this electron pair. So that electron pair is something that I'm going to use. Now, my double bonds, they can be used in resonance as well, and I can also use one bond of my triple bond, one pi bond of my triple bond, so all of those electrons are going to be delocalized as well. Now, these electrons on my middle nitrogen, those electrons can be used in resonance as well, because I can push them towards the double bond and have them run around the molecule. However, when it comes to the electrons on my last nitrogen over here, those electrons are also going to be localized like the ones on the oxygen, because that nitrogen does not have an empty orbital or a pi bond nearby, so we cannot use it in any meaningful way for the delocalization purposes. And if if you try to draw any resonance structures where you're going to use the electron pairs on that nitrogen, well, that's going to be something nonsensical. So this way, counting all of my delocalized electrons here, I have two electrons on the nitrogen, two electrons on my uh, carbon-oxygen double bond, two electrons on the pi bond, two electrons on the other pi bond, two electrons that I can use from my triple bond, and two electrons on my nitrogen in the middle. So the grand total here, we have 12 delocalized pi electrons in this molecule. Now, some instructors can be tricky about these questions, and they can only ask you about the delocalized electrons on heteroatoms. In this case, that means that we have four delocalized electrons on the nitrogens. So when it comes to questions like that, when you need to count your delocalized electrons, it can be either delocalized localized electrons in the entire molecule, so all electrons that are meaningfully participating in resonance, or your instructor can specifically ask for the delocalized or delocalizable electrons that are sitting on the heteroatoms. So always pay very close attention to how your question is asked and how exactly it is phrased so you don't get tricked by that. And if you like a bit of a challenge, let me know how many delocalized electrons you have in this molecule and write that in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and subscribe for more. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time.